Hi everybody, Bill Priestley here. Welcome into another edition of Mailbag. This is where we take your social media posts with the hashtag FWMailbag and take your emails at mailbag at freightwaves.com. We get them to our experts and we get the answers back to you. This week's question is, will shippers regret sending ships to East Coast ports and overburdening them when congestion and labor issues on the West Coast made East Coast options attractive? A reminder, these videos are presented to you in the order in which they were received. I don't know if regret is the right word. While I do think moving to the East Coast is a short-term solution, I do think that if everyone uses this solution, we'll kind of be back to where we started with, with massive port congestion and long dwell times, but just on the East Coast instead of the West Coast. Over the next few months, as things on the West Coast do become a little bit more uncertain from the long-term negotiations to the effects of AB5, I do think we will see some shippers proactively move shipments to other ports, whether it's Houston, Detroit, the East Coast, etc. I do think we will start to see dwell times rise on the East Coast as the West Coast kind of more or less sorts itself out, um, but it's ultimately just going to get down to what kind of creative solutions you can have to minimize your dwell times and the impacts to your supply chain. I don't think shippers will regret their decision to move things to the, from the West Coast to the East Coast. I think issues that shippers are facing right now are going to happen regardless. I mean, if you look at inventory levels, uh, stories, uh, containers not even being able to be pulled from the ports because there's nowhere for them to go in the where the goods to go into warehouses so I think that was gonna always happen so I don't think it's a matter of regret I think the issues are good I think what's gonna be telling is how do the West Coast versus East Coast ports handle things when when some of these inventory levels work them way we work themselves out I like East Coast West Coast controversies I also like talking about herd mentality, and that's what we've seen with everyone switching to the East Coast. Uh, if you're leading the pack, you're gonna be going, doing great. If not, you're gonna fight the congestion and then getting goods inland. Uh, it's a different network on the East Coast than it is on the West Coast, and it's gonna be challenging for sure. So that's what we're gonna see in the back half of 2022. Yeah, I don't agree with Kevin uh, or anything that he says. Uh, I didn't look at his video or listen to any of his words, but just that kind of smug look uh, when I saw his face show up on the thread, uh, I just made me think, no, I'm gonna disagree with that. And that's where I stand. I don't think shippers will regret the overcorrection of sending so much of their shipments to the East Coast as opposed to the West Coast. But I think that there will be a distinct amount of surprise on how much overcorrection was done. And it will cause some folks to think about more diversification in their logistic strategy and their shipping strategy instead of just an all or nothing approach to East Coast versus West Coast. And I also think that it will cause folks to be a little bit more careful and maybe more thoughtful about how they plan where stuff goes. But it's hard to plan that and it's really difficult to do. So it's not a job that I would want to have because it's a hard job to do. Will they regret it? Yeah, probably a little bit, but I mean, what else are they going to do other than just wait in those lines at the West Coast ports anyways? Um, we had somebody on the show on Freightways Now earlier this week talking about the infrastructure issues at East Coast ports and how they're just not equipped the same as West Coast ports. And that's what's going to cause an issue now. And um, I'm sure that people are working on fixing that to allow for more congestion at the East Coast ports. But this expert on our show was saying, you know, we're still years away from, from that really helping at all. So probably gonna regret it a little bit, but you gotta try everything. So there's a good deal of uncertainty surrounding the West Coast right now. Uh, like the implications of AB5 on future capacity in the region, the unresolved labor negotiations between the dock workers union and the ports, I think it would make sense for shippers to divest their freight from those ports, at least in part. I also think it's wise in general to help develop uh, infrastructure more broadly so shippers don't wake up one day and find that all their eggs are in one basket and the basket's on fire. Uh, smaller ports, to their credit, like the Port of Savannah, have already announced and committed funds to uh, expanding. That being said, there will likely be some short-term growing pains for everyone involved. But whether or not that's a cause for regret depends ultimately on your time. 
You already have shippers that are regretting moving to the East Coast from the West Coast due to the backups that are happening there right now. The only real advantage of moving to the East Coast from the West Coast at this point in time with all the backups on the East Coast is that you don't have to deal with Sasquatch in the, uh, in the, in, in the Pacific Northwest. Of course, if you're in Los Angeles, you don't have to deal with that either, but you have to deal with pickleballers, and they're just as bad as Sasquatch. So regretting it? No. Difficulties on both sides? Yes. Will it work out? Eventually. If we end pickleballers, we'll be okay. That's going to do it for this edition of Mailbag. A reminder, send your social media posts with the hashtag FWMailbag to us or email us at mailbag at freightwaves.com and we'll get your questions to our experts. See you next week.